Good afternoon. My name is James Little from Mass Effect Interpretation Services. Today I would like to share with you another video in a series on data processing for the NIST MSMS search using the Thermo Freestyle software. The Freestyle software and the associated Orbitrap files are excellent ways to identify unknowns, especially when the MSMS spectra are sent to the NIST search to be searched with their very high quality MSMS databases. Before, in part one, I covered my favorite approach, but this one will have another enhancement nearby precursors that I think makes it easier to use. And this was shown to me by Ken Matuzak from Thermo Fisher Scientific. So thank you, Ken. We'll again demonstrate it with the Uvenol 3000, molecular weight 214 here at the bottom, LCMS and MS analyses, both positive and negative, the diode array and the UV viz. So it has a lot of information just in one run that allows you to identify the unknown. So let's close the PowerPoint here and go to the Excalibur software. And we'll open the freestyle parts. There's a lot of different things within the Excalibur software, but we want the freestyle part, which we'll open. And we'll go open our Juvenal 3000. And again, what you get up initially is the whole chromatogram with the positive and the negative MS and the positive and negative MSMS, -MS, so it's all together, so you have to parse it out. And in my favorite approach that I showed you before, we used a layout that we saved. So we're going up here to the top, workspace, options, layouts, apply, and we'll go get that one that we saved and say open. This quickly parses everything out into a nice display that we can use for processing the data. So at the top, we have the positive ion, the next one, is, next one down is the negative ion MS chromatogram, and this is the diode array chromatogram. So, I need to express a couple of things here that are very important. You cannot do nearby precursor when you in the MS mode when you use the average function. So, do not average the positive or negative ion chromatogram to do it. You can only single click on it to get the spectrum. Likewise, if you average the MS MS spectra. You cannot send it to the NIST search properly because it'll chop off the significant figures to the right of the decimal. So that's another thing that you need to keep in mind. And the last thing that's not quite as important, you cannot average the diode array chromatogram to get the average spectrum. So we're going to the top here. So we have the positive ion selected. We'll left click on it one time. Uh, not average, just left click it to get the spectrum. And we can see that we have 215, which is our M plus H for the juvenile. This 250 is chemical noise within the data file, so it was in the blank, so it's not important. So now we have the MS spectrum at the bottom. Usually, when we were trying to do MSMS, -MS, we would find the one we wanted. We'd come down to the bottom where our ranges are, and you'd click on the pull down add uh, arrow here, and you'd have to go find the 215 in the positive ion mode. But you see, there's a lot of different MSMS -MS spectra that it acquired in this non targeted data files, so it takes a while to do that. So it'd be nice if we could skip that part. And that's what the nearby precursors allow you to do. So in the nearby precursors, you just left click on the chromatogram, actually the MS spectrum here. You see I've highlighted the bar. Now you can come up to the top, and now you can see the nearby precursors, and you can click on that to do to start that part of the process. Again, you cannot do this on average spectrum, only single click get to MS spectrum, then you can figure out which MS, MS spectra are associated with the ion. So we just click on nearby precursors. You'll notice a little uh, purple arrow appeared here and here. That's an even here. It's saying that all those ions that have a little purple circle, circle, the data system, when it acquired the data file, acquired an MS, MS spectra, spectrum for that component. And if you just double left click, not single, but double left click while you got the bar highlighted here, and over to the side, you'll get the MSMS -MS spectrum for the 215 ion. So you can that's very easy. Uh, if you wanted to get the one for the 250, just double left click on it, and it would show up over to the side also. So I think this is a, a lot easier than having to pull down the menu. We'll just repeat it for the negative ion. So we'll close up this window. We'll close up this window. Now we'll go up to the negative ion MS chromatogram at the top. Just double, not just single left click. Can't do an average. You'll see we got the M minus H for the 213 ion, 
for the juvenile, so that's good. And if we come down here and highlight this bar, you got to make sure you highlight it to make it active. Then you can, it's already here. You didn't have to go to nearby precursors because it just keeps doing that after you do it. So the nice purple circles here, you double left click on it and you have the spectrum over on the other side. So I, I think this is a much easier approach when it's added with the first part of the approach for processing data, especially when it's doing non-targeted MSMS where it acquires a lot of different channels. If you're doing targeted, not as big a deal. So I'll close this one. I want to show you one more thing. If you close this and you think, oh, I'll, oh, I closed this one. I didn't really mean to close the spectrum. Now I've lost my spectrum window, so I can't get it to show me another spectrum. You have to go up to the top, workspace options. You come over where it says spectrum. You say insert view. Now you have a spectrum again that you can use to do the process that you want to do. So I hope you'll find the nearby precursors a useful enhancement to the regular process to make data processing easier. Good day.